Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, everybody. It's Friday again. It's been a while since our last Friday, and I'm very happy to be back with you, Anne. Hello. Hello, Joost. <laughs> Glad to be back again. <laughs> So am I. Um, I have um, still many more questions to ask you. And this time we will also um, talk about some of the questions that we got sent by a homeopath from Canada. So, um, yeah, I think we will start with that. So uh, last time we were speaking about the gemstones. Yeah. In particular, and this is a um, yeah. There is not too much information, or there are not too many cases. I would say there is enough information, but not too many cases about gemstones. So it's a hot topic, I would say. Mm. Um, and first of all, I would invite you uh, to recap a little bit or to resume, um, give a resume of the of the qualities of gemstones in general. Okay, mm, I can do that in short. Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the long version is in the last episode, but just yes. short. In short, when we have a case, I explain that a first um, division we can make or, or classification is it second or third dimension case. That is always a good start. So obviously, mm -hmm. gemstones uh, are uh, stones, so they are second dimension. Now, if we have second dimension case, then we have second dimension characteristics. That's first. That, so uh -huh. that, that also applies to the gemstones. Yeah. And then we have um, um, this attitude, this, this context that I talked about in other um, mm -hmm. Fridays. Uh, this context that makes us think, makes us relate to the patient or the patient towards us as a mineral. So we think this must be a mineral, but not white and why not because the context is mineral but the content the the topics are plant like and uh -huh. i always say when you can't choose between a mineral and a plant probably it's a gemstone so that's the <laughs> point and you have this context mineral content plant like case and then you have this feeling this patient is has somewhat a call somewhat I hesitate to, to use the word, it's somewhat hard, somewhat untouchable outside. Like, uh -huh. But at the same time, they're open-hearted and they tell you their feelings with no reservation. It's not a timidity or something that they hide from you, not at all. But it's like the, a little bit of this contrast between this aloofness on the outside mm -hmm. and this warmth. Um, emotionality in the inside. Mm -hmm. So that would also be a point of the gemstone. And there are many more things, but that's the main thing, is that. Right. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, I'd say for further details, I, I would refer the viewers to our last episode, Fridays mm -hmm. with Anna, mm -hmm. session 11. Um, and now I would like to expand on this topic because the gemstones, as the name indicates, form uh, are, may, uh, are part of a larger group, the stones, mm -hmm. which, um, as I imagine, also share elemental features. But there must be also some difference. So how how can we approach this, or how does this all fit together? Yeah. That's a very good question, and uh, my answer would be we wish that <laughs> we already had these subclassifications. 
and I would say I don't think we have them yet but mm. we, we always call this a work in progress right yeah. <laughs> what yeah. I see is in um, in my practice of the last seven years you know when I when I know the remedies beforehand I prescribe uh, many 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 more gemstones than before I, I hardly ever prescribed one before and if I did it was a gemstone with a good proving which is mm -hmm. legitimate otherwise how would you ever find one but since the gift I prescribe them often so I'm in the position the, the luckily position to, to learn how the gemstones behave by my yeah. patients yes yeah and which so, is uh, arguably uh, the best source yeah yes it is and I try to find uh, categories and similarities between mm -hmm. groups and I must say even with many cases uh, maybe I don't know maybe 30 cases or 40 cases I haven't counted them but I wasn't able so far to distinguish particular groups so I try to because of course it's normal when you talk about gemstones and tell your students and the homeopaths you should prescribe them more because they're not rare and so then what kind of species what kind of substance will you prescribe if you don't know beforehand right mm -hmm. so you, you need some some guidance and we only have 16 provings something like that 16 provings and I have a little booklet one six of, yes what did you say one six one six yeah not six zero <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah 16 yeah that's not, not so even. Yeah. yeah and you know michael ginger we talked of this person before i have a little booklet it's a small booklet here it's yes. 430 gemstones this is the newer the more recent edition says 500 something yeah, Oops. Books. and it's it's even a, 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 um, a small percentage of all the stones that exist. So it's we are in the same position as with composite, like twenty thousand, I don't know, spiders, so many exactly. thousands in the same position. <laughs> we find ourselves in too much information. We yeah. can't manage this, we can't handle this. There is no way. So what to do? Then the same author, uh, uh, this Michael Ginger, the late Michael Ginger, I must say, uh, dedicated his life to gemstones and he he wrote a, 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 a unique book on it it's called uh, in German I even wrote it down in German it's Stein Heilkunde <laughs> <laughs> and it's translated in Dutch it's translated in English so it's, it's healing stones or something and he go in he goes into detail Mm -hmm. uh, on the formation of stones so you have to, basically three main ways in in, in which uh, gemstones are formed so it's it's the, uh, the, the the primary sources is like the volcanic stones and you have the, the secondary where the uh, result of erosion and new combinations and you have a tertiary or uh, uh, another way of uh, forming this in um, how to say uh, under enormous pressure where the tectonic plates yeah. mm -hmm. you know come together and, and you know that this pressure is so enormous that they that they're not exploding from the volcano they're just making other combinations mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. for him it is a understanding of the basic process the person is in is it the primary process like a potential a new beginning or mm -hmm. is it a process in which the person is under the influence and the erosion of its env his environment or mm -hmm. some new um, like a metamorphosis that has to happen in his life under the pressure of the old is unsustainable so mm -hmm. that could be a, a first um, division uh, yeah. in, in your case could be hmm, that you could evaluate the whole case in in this sense and then he makes a second division into the um, crystalline um, how do you say this lattices this is called crystalline lattices you only have seven structures crystals can only uh, structure themselves in seven atomic uh, stable structures uh -huh. 
he applies to each each structure and i wrote them down because otherwise i can't pronounce it in english yeah. so the cubic tetrahedral hexagonal monoclinic triclinic rhombohedral and orthorubic well there's all you know there's a lot of the words we're not familiar with but actually yeah. very simple geometric structures you know you yeah them on a on a graph they're very simple and you say oh that's what it's meant mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's, combining a complicated word yeah it's complicated words for a simple idea that the atoms are structured in a stable way mm -hmm. and there's only seven possible ways mm -hmm. so and he uh um describes in his book very vividly how each structure um, uh, represents a personality. Uh -huh. You have like the cubic personality. And so the there are seven personalities, in other words. The personalities, how you... I mean, seven. There are seven. seven like yeah. uh -huh. big groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the next division is you have the constitu constituents. And there mm -hmm. are so many. Yeah, mm -hmm. like calcium, it's uh, uh, silica, it's uh, alumina, it's sulfur. There are not so many. And he applies characteristics, and they're very similar to the homeopathic characteristics. Uh -huh. And then finally, he applies also uh, the color, color psychology yes. in the system. So he re ends up with a system that I, of course, in this limited time, I cannot give a whole lecture on it, but I summarized the whole book. And he ends up with very useful, um, how to say, overviews with a scheme. We like schemes, right? We, yes. your past, we like schemes. <laughs> and with divisions in, so how is the, um, the original stone made? Is it primary, secondary? Then how is it um, formed? How is the crystalline structure? And then what are the constituents? And what is the color? And in this graph, you see all the stones named. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. All right. So, this so far is the best path I find yeah. to come up to a, to a result, come up with a result with a stone in the end. Uh -huh. Not up to 500, like randomly, I will choose a red one because my patient likes red, but. Uh, which is also legitimate if you don't know what to do. But, you, you know, this is, I think, better. Right. <laughs> well, that sounds already very um, hopeful, very, yes. very promising that there is a, a good bit of work done in, form, in terms of classification of them. It's a huge work. You know, of course, I, as you did and everybody else studied on uh, on Wikipedia, I studied in books on gemstones. I read many. Uh, they all, they all more or less similar. The one I think copies the other um, provings, and there's not much practical information. That's what yeah. I find. I come, I came to the conclusion that it's very, you know, new agey, uh, very often very airy-fairy, it's all very spiritual, but there's nothing you can do with it as a homeopath. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see what you mean. So that would already kind of, um, that would take us also to possible, well, you mean in terms of that, that would be a characteristic of a, that is described in the homeopathic literature as pertaining to gemstones or to, to stones. It, com it comes close. Aging. Yes, yeah. it comes very close. It is not a homeopathic analysis that the author makes, but yeah. it's so close to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I see. Okay. Um, so, would there be any, I mean, this is a, this is already once we know that we need a stone remedy, right? We can go down this path of uh, the different personalities, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which, should all, which should also be quite a task, I think. And um, then we can find our way to a particular stone. Mm -hmm. Is there, um, once we know it it must be from the second dimension but we're not sure yet where it really fits 
a gemstone kind of gives us a pointer where you said uh, it's a has the emotionality of a plant or um, sensitivity of a plant but also has a rather hard surface so to say mm -hmm. a hard mm -hmm. presentation mm -hmm. um so if we don't see that but we think okay it must be something elemental it's not really an element is there anything uh, precise, more precise that we could use to re to get to a stone? Yeah, the stones I find don't have this um, smoothness or this um, uh, like this surface of "Don't touch me." Polished, so to say. Yeah, like this polished. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like <laughs> this smooth surface that nothing sticks. You know, mm. you're not invited to come close. Yeah. At the country, you're more or less invited to stay a little bit at the distance. Although they might talk about very emotional issues. These rocks, as as far as I saw them, in cases don't have them. They they just very mineral like, and you in the beginning you're you're very confident. You think, okay, this is an element, this is a mineral, and then you try to fit them in very the table, and that's where the difficulty starts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You you don't have one issue here and one issue there. You have another one there, another one there, another one there. They're all over. So first you go to a compound, but then yes. <laughs> you're running out of compounds. Yeah, maybe three, uh, if you have more than three. And also, even the three compounds that we know in homeopathic uh, mm -hmm. substances and homeopathic treatment, they have a particular combination. There's not mm -hmm. any trias that will work. Yeah. 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 So there are not too many, and there are particular ones. You cannot yeah. randomly assemble three elements and say, okay, then we have a combination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Well, you can, but I wouldn't advise it. Eh? Uh -huh. Then it would be better to think about the stone. The stone that has this, um, how do you say, discrete elements there, but they're not known to be a particular homeopathic um, element on the periodic table, or they don't mm -hmm. fit into the boxes of characteristics. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, um, yeah, so then we would already kind of get a hint that we need a stone. Mm -hmm. Is there, do, are you aware of anything uh, like the work of Michael Ringer about the gemstones? for stones or for um, i don't know what the other subgroups are in stones i unfortunately i don't have it because yeah. you know they're completely disregarded in homeop homeopathy we yeah. only have a few provings so they don't even appeal to us to prove them yeah mm. and if they're proven then it's like granite which is a, a marble bit. right marble and limestone is one author and yeah. because these elements are very prominent in, in the area where she lives or lived, and they already appeal to her personally, but that's a, that's an exception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who else, where else is proving these substances? This, they're so abundant that we disregard them. They, were, they are like taking for granted. <laughs> mm. We have no interest in them. They don't they don't speak to us we don't uh, add symbolism to that to them or, or they're just there yeah it's it's funny even though they're the building blocks literally yes. of our lives yes and uh, if you dig in the earth there's the most abundant thing we have the stones yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 right um so because um, I don't know much about the stones, but I, having searched um, a few times for stones myself, I came to the conclusion that you will, or many stones have a calcium and many stones have a silicon component, yes. but that doesn't get you very far because most of the stones have them, yes. and that's not a that's not a differentiating uh, aspect. No. You would need something else, and then there's some other elements, and you can maybe throw them together. Mm -hmm. and see if that works but um yeah so far 
but that's also I said this with say this with caution. So far, mm -hmm. I've seen a few hints every now and then that if the person needs a particular stone, there's somehow how to say an understanding of what the um, our meaning, our use, our um, connection with the substances. Uh -huh. I know you were there when we did the porcelain. Yes. Porcelain yeah. case. So yeah. we could see that the constituents was one thing. Uh, of course, second dimension, mineral life, constituents. And then also there was some kind of this refinement. And mm -hmm. this, if I remember well, this, um, can I say, breakability, fragility, mm -hmm. in the case that makes it different than, than the constituents. Um, I had an uh, asbestos case. Where, uh -huh. Yeah, two in fact. Where the, um, how can I say it? You know, we use it for insulation. Yeah. yeah. Where this insulation idea was in the case. So again, second dimension, mineral lye, constituents, and then this particular characteristics characteristic that is um, the main thing for this, for us, uh, the main connection uh, with the substance that we make. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be a point, but I, but I say this with caution because it leaves all the doors wide open for imagination again. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. Did they have, uh, now by the way, because I'm just remembering it from my uh, pathology lessons, did they have lung issues? No. 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 Neither one. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, yeah. You know, every substance, and it's not me saying this, but uh, people before me is, is a poison, depending, yeah, yeah depending uh, on the dose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to inhale asbestos. No, I'm sure if you inhale carbon, you won't be uh, much better off. Uh, There's a lot of things you shouldn't inhale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not made yeah. for that. <laughs> yes, right. Um, So a question that I would um, that I find really interesting now because this classification of gemstones according to Ginga mm. have t has taken us to a different way of or his way of classification. Mm. As a good scientist, <clears throat> as we are as homeopaths. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering, is there a general classification? And does it make sense from your point of view also to try to find it? Is there an underlying general classification for all remedies? Um, or first of all, for all the stones or gemstones? And again, we wish. Yeah. And we have to. I think we have to evolve in that direction. I think there's no other way for you know, for the health of the homeopath, and mm -hmm. I also mean for his mental health, to come to a manageable system of classification, because yeah. otherwise we we drowned in too much information. Like I told you, this Ginga, this book is is fantastic. It's great, but again, it's it. It demands from the homeopath again study. You have to read the book. You have yeah. to study the book before mm. you are able to apply all his. It, it's a work he. It took him years with the whole group, maybe decades, to come to these yeah. conclusions. It's not yeah. something you just read and say, "Oh, great, mm. let's do that." <laughs> so <laughs> somebody yeah. needs to needs to digest this, pre-digest this information, and yeah. then like put it in manageable chunks for the homeopath to use. Yes, that's mm -hmm. why I say we wish, and it's also my wish and my my aim to contribute to this um, uh, like of overview, like this map of everything yes. <laughs> that the homeopath can use for, for, for the benefit of, of his patient, like a classification of everything. Yes, it's not there yet. It's not in place yet. It's only 20 years, hardly 20 years that we started classification in, in mm -hmm. and subgroups. And, and it, the evolution is very fast. 
So yes, we should aim at classification of everything, but yeah. surely for the second dimension, and probably it, it appeals less to people to work with that because it's like, okay, that's minerals, that's done. And in, in my point of view, it's not, it's, it's only the beginning. Mm. More homeopaths are interested to go into the the kingdom, the, the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. It seems so more so much more appealing. Yeah. The second dimension is a little bit overlooked. It's it's a bit invisible. We, we don't pay attention to it. But yes, we should. We should, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's not as lifeless as it might seem. Oh yes. no, <laughs> it's full of life. A rock lives, and you know our patients who need rocks are surely alive. Yeah? Pretty lively, yes, exactly. Yeah. I see. So at the moment, it's uh, or in your opinion, it's likely there is one. Yes. But it's no, not on the horizon yet. Well, we talked, we touched it a little bit when we talked about second dimension, like what could it be if it's not an element? And mm -hmm. elements are quite rare because it, also in nature, they, they don't appear uh, much as single elements. It's actually, that's the exception. So it could be a gemstone, it could be a stone, that's still combinations of elements, but it could also be a bacteria. We talked about no zones. How do you know that it's not an element and a bacteria? In the beginning, you will think you have a, uh, a mineral because of the context later you will you will understand that it has a whole different mindset mm -hmm. then it could also be a sarcot yeah. or a hormone so this yeah. <laughs> i think these groups we have the pointers to these groups yeah the problem starts when you have like this subdivision mm, exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that exactly is a problem mm. yeah and there um Every now and then, a group of people or a person dedicates themselves at this particular trying to find a differentiation in a group, but it's a lot of work always, right? And we're not so far that we can say, okay, we have like 30 bacteria, that'll do for the time being. <laughs> yeah. There are many yeah. more, but we have the, the, the main ones. We have some, yeah. we have some pointers. And we talked about it, like, you know, the chronic stages of acute disease that don't exist and all that. So we have some pointers which bacterium to choose. Same with mm -hmm. nozodes, with sarcodes, I mean, and hormones. Of course, we have the whole idea that is expressed in the case. So if it's a functional um, um, process that the patient describes, like, if I have it, then this happens. If I don't have it, if I lack it, then this happens. And that's the whole case. Then we only, only have to understand what kind of enzyme, hormone, or whatever product does this kind of thing in a human being. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something we can understand with our minds. Yeah. Yeah. It describes it very well. We can come to, to the final substance. The problem is more like with. It sounds because the people won't describe it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, okay. This is a. I'd say we leave it for now as, okay. mm -hmm. at this. And um, I would like to talk with you about further subgroups also in the coming episodes. Yeah. And there is also another topic that popped up for me recently, and that was uh, that we already spoke about a little bit outside of the Fridays, mm -hmm. um, and that was the classification of disease, and that's something that we also should address in a in a coming yeah uh, session. Yes. Yes. Speaking about classification. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are going to into it now or later. No, I would like to do it later. I think it's a, it's a larger topic, and it's uh, even though it's core basic homeopathy, it's probably not very uh, <laughs> known or applied or used. No, you're right. You're right. So um, 
Okay, so I uh, invite all the viewers to keep sending in their questions, mm -hmm. whatever they might be. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Anna. You're welcome, as always. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward, as always, to yeah. our next session. Okay, so we'll talk about classification then of diseases. Fine. All yeah. right. See you next Friday. Okay, be well. <laughs> you bye too. Bye bye. Bye.